if you'll pick up with me, let's get into Revelation chapter 13. And, and we're going to go right there. And if for some reason you miss some of these, all of them are on YouTube. I encourage you to go and catch the other 12 chapters. Picking up at verse number 1, I want you to notice this. John is now again seeing. He's not. Last week we saw where he had heard a voice from heaven. Now he is actually in the process of seeing uh, the vision that God's giving him. And verse number 1 says in Revelation chapter 3, we're going to read the first six verses. We're going to dissect Then it says this, And the dragon... And the dragon stood in the sand of the seashore. Then I saw a beast coming up out of the sea. The beast had ten horns and seven heads, and on his horns were ten diadems, and on his head were blasphemous names. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth was like that of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his throne and his great authority." Verse number 3 says, And I saw of his heads as it had been slain, and his fatal wound was healed. And the whole earth was amazed and followed after the beast. They worshipped the dragon because he had his authority to the, gave his authority to the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast? And who is able to wage war with him? There was given to him a mouth speaking arrogant words and blasphemies. Authority to act for 42 months was given to him. And he opened his mouth and blasphemies against God to blasphemy his name and his tabernacle, that is, those who dwell in heaven. Well, there's a couple of things I want you to notice this morning. I have given several verses to read. Let me go ahead and get a mic ready here. Several verses to read this morning as it relates to this one chapter. This one doesn't work. Okay. How is that possible? All right. This one works. Good morning. Do you work? Okay, we're working. So if you guys would, I have them numbered. So if you will be ready for those that are getting ready to come up and read. Jeff, if you'll be ready in just a moment, I want you to read something. But before you do, I want you guys to make some notes. Now remember, Satan is always trying to be like God. He's trying to mimic God because he wanted to be God. Remember, church? That's his pride. So therefore, as Satan is trying to be like God, believe believe it or not, Satan even established his own quote-unquote trinity. Did you not know that? Can I show it to you this morning? There's Satan himself. There's the Antichrist, which will be a religious and a political leader that we already see on the scene. And then there's one called the false prophet. Well, Satan himself, he tries to be like God. Are you with me, church? And then the Antichrist, he likes to use him as his what? Who can tell me? His son. He's here to earth on this political power. He's got all the authorities we see here to be technically his son. He's going to use him. He's nothing but a mere man with demonic power. Are you with me, church? And then there will be the false prophet, which will be his, what? His, not holy, but be, yeah, yeah, yeah. He will be somewhat his spirit. In other words, he'll be the one that's always pushing and getting and encouraging people to follow who? The Satan or the Antichrist. So I want you to kind of understand that this morning. Satan is always trying to mimic God. The symbols, we talked about those in chapter 12 last week, so if, you're, if you even miss that, the heads show dominion, dominion in power. We see the number 10 as we look at the various world governments that will be established to come under this one world government with horns. We talked about horns are a symbol of power, to show power. The crowns, again, showing the dominion, the rulers of the time that will fall under who? The Antichrist. And then we see the word blasphemy. Blasphemy. The purpose of the blasphemy is to do what? To denounce who? The true and only God. There is only one God. Jeff, if you would read Daniel chapter 7, verse 8. Daniel 7, 8 says, While I was contemplating the horns, behold, another horn, a little one, came up among them, and three of the first horns were pulled out by the roots before it. And behold, this horn possessed eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth uttering great boast. This horn, 
This one that comes up as the Antichrist will be the one that will proclaim himself as the leader of the world. And in just a moment, we're going to see the false prophet who will come to be the one that will promote this Antichrist. And then subsequently, we will see those that will be ordered to take the mark of this ruler, of this beast. And those that refuse to do that will be destroyed or killed. I want you to notice there it says wounded. There's been many speculations as to this wound that takes place on the head. In fact, many have said they've, they've tried to pick various rulers that have come from the past. The possibilities that I adhere to in my study is one of two. It, the first one is that it would be the ruler of that time, that some event that would cause the Antichrist would cause this person to be struck and it will look as if he has been risen from the dead. You could, you could submit to that one because again he will want to appear as who? Christ. The other, other theory that I submit to is that it, it could be a possibility of the resurrection of the Roman Empire because we know from those, those kingdoms, from those that exists today, that they will be the ones that will what? Wage war against the Lord, wage war against Israel. So those are the two theories or possibilities that I submit to. And there are several that are out there, but I want to submit to you this. Whoever and however this could happen, the Lord says that by this wound, it will cause that, that he's healed from or that is resurrected to a seam or appear as Christ, they will be, the people at that time will be amazed by it. So much so that they will want to follow and worship this person. Are you with me, church? All right. Kind of interesting. Who has number two? Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Not only did Daniel speak of this in prophecy, but let's look what the Lord said at the time that sin had occurred what God was going to do to Satan. He said, And I will put enemy between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed, and, she shall, and he shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. All right. Isn't it interesting that way back in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, God said that he would do what to the head? What did he say he would do? No, that's not what he said he would do to the head. What did he say he would do to the head? He would what? Put a blow to the head. Now, I know enough, just enough about the medical profession that when you get a blow to the head, you're pretty much over. And then it says that he, Satan, will bruise the heel. That's the heel of Christ. He will cause Christ to suffer. Did not Christ suffer? There's a difference between a blow and a bruise. Are you with me, church? Christ suffered, but when Christ went to the cross and he died for the sins of humanity, for those that would accept him, when he arose on that third day, was that not the final blow to Satan? Amen, church? That's something to rejoice about. You see, Satan is defeated, and he still hasn't figured it out. Go all the way back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. He can cause Christ to suffer. He can cause Christ's followers to be persecuted and suffered, but we will be victorious because he's been defeated. He's got the blow to the head. There's so much more I could go on and speak about. Now, last week, in fact, who has number three? We talked a moment ago there, as, as you look in verses four and five, it says that he will speak blasphemies and arrogant during the last three and a half years. We will notice that the tribulation will be more intense as it draws to a close, if you would, Angela. Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. We read this last week. There's a term, and I want you to take some time this week and actually look it up and read more about it, the abomination of desolation. Go ahead. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand. Let the reader understand. During this last year's the abomination of desolation. It's going to get worse. It's drawing to a close. God's wrath is soon to just, just all out. And Satan is going to be defeated. But Satan's going to do whatever he can to destroy those that follow God. And any reference to God whatsoever, so much so that if you even proclaim that you know God and don't take the mark, you be beheaded. You're going to be killed. You must follow the Antichrist. In this life. If you even want to survive. Now let me ask you this question this morning. How many of you 
Let's just say again. That if you were in that time and you, you got a chance to see the rapture occur and you, had a, and you, you were actually living, you said, I'm going to follow Christ. And if someone came to you and said, listen, take the mark. If you take the mark, refuse, deny Christ. Take the mark. You can live. Now let me just pause for a moment. Is that occurring today in this country? No, no, no. It's not occurring here in the United States. Is it occurring in the world? Y'all been watching what's going on? Those across this big blue pond are being told to either deny Christ or die. We live in the lap of luxury to have the freedom to be in this house today to worship our Lord and our Savior without retaliation or retribution. But let me ask you a question. If we were living across this big blue pond in another country, would we have the same boldness? I want you to ask yourself that question, church. You see, it's so easy. It's so easy to be in this beautiful facility, to be in this air-conditioned room, and say, Marty, I love the Lord. I'm going to follow him wherever he wants me to go. Except on Sunday nights at praise and prayer. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I had to throw that in there. Just had to throw it in there. Had to, I'm sorry. Had to throw it in there. Or, you know, okay, uh, Bible study, I'm busy. Read, read his word on uh, uh, when I got time. But yet there are people who are giving their life because they refuse to denounce Jesus. Marty, is that a guilt trip? <laughs> if you're feeling guilty, it ain't coming from me. You see, I can't make you feel guilty. But I want you to just search your soul. Search your heart. We say we love him. We say we're going to follow him. But we can't even give him our time. <laughs> Praise God. You know, we have never had to take an offering here. I'm, well, I say never take an offering. You know where they're at. You know, you, God, I, people have asked me all the time, Marty, how, how are you doing what you're doing over there at Fellowship of the Hills? How are you guys able to build and do all these things? I said, well, pff, Marty didn't do nothing. Did you guys have building funds and drives and... No, we got these two things. We sit in the back of a room, and God touches the heart of his people to do what needs to be done. Amen. That's how it works. That's how it works. Satan wants to be like God. His whole purpose is to be worshipped like God. And that's the premise of what's taking place here. It's an all-out war, blasphemy against God to be what, church? To be worshipped as God. Follow along with me again. Revelation chapter 13, verse 7. Let's follow the next several verses. It says, It was also given to him to do what, church? To make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority over every tribe and every people and every tongue and every nation was given to him. All who dwell on earth will what, church? Worship him. All who dwell on earth will worship him. Now notice this. Everyone whose name has what? Now I want you to underline that. Everyone's name who has not been written in what, church? The Lamb's book of life. Who has been slain. Now I want you to notice what John says here. It's very important in verse number 9. He says, if anyone has an ear, let him hear. What is John doing right here? One word begins with a W. Warning. Who said warning? It's a warning. John says, listen, listen. If you've got an ear, you need to pay attention. Listen up. If your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have already become a what? A follower, a worshiper of who, church? Satan. John goes on, he says, hey, listen, if you've got an ear, listen up here. Verse number 10, if anyone is destined for captivity, to captivity he goes. If anyone kills with a sword, with a sword he must be killed. Here is the perseverance and the faith of the saints. Now what John is telling us here, that at this time what's called an eye for an eye and a 
tooth for tooth. Now let me take you back into Matthew. Do you remember when they were coming to seize Jesus? What did Peter do? How many of you remember that? What did he do? He cut off the ear. And what did Jesus do? It's fixed. <laughs> but he said something to Peter. What did he say? Those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. Jesus is explaining to John this very simple fact. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I know what you want to do. I know what you're going to try to do. But he says, you persevere. Is it possible you're going to be persecuted? Yes. But he says, let me take care of it. Let me deal with it with my wrath. Let me deal with it with my justice. Let me take care of it. I pray this morning that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I pray this morning that you know that your victory has already been accomplished through Jesus Christ. There is nothing you can do to save yourself. It is only through the blood of Jesus Christ, that spotless lamb that was slain for you. Many today try to do God's work for themselves. But you can't do it. Jesus has already done it. John says, take an ear and listen up. Your salvation comes from Jesus Christ. It doesn't come because you can carry a sword and try to defend your honor. Are you with me, church? You can serve Jesus Christ by living your life for him. You can serve Jesus Christ by letting others see Jesus in you. You can serve Jesus Christ by being the bondservant, by being that one that is sealed for the throne and live the life for him. Amen, church? Well, there's so much more I could say about this this morning, but I want you to pick up with me in verse number 11. In verse number 11, it says, Then I saw another beast. That's kind of interesting. He says, I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Now, I don't know about you, but lambs don't have horns. Amen? Now, somebody I just gave a verse to, and maybe we've just read it, but I want to make sure that we cover it again if we have not. Who has Matthew 7, 15? If you would, Niall. I want you to listen to this verse. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Jesus said, beware of false prophets that come what, church? In sheep's clothing. Isn't it amazing that Jesus would make that statement that this would be recorded in Matthew, and here we see in Revelation, here is one comes, this beast, who has the appearance of a what, church? A lamb with horns of power, but he speaks as the what? which is Satan. And he speaks as Satan, which means he is speaking, what was that word? Blasphemy against God. Now listen, let's follow this beast here just for a moment. This is the false prophet. He exercises, verse 12, he exercises all authority over the first beast in his presence. And he makes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down out of heaven to earth and in the presence of men. He what, church? He deceives those who dwell on earth because of the signs which it has, was given to him to perform in the presence of the beast, telling those who dwell on earth to make an image to the beast who had the wound of the sword and has come to life. Wow, there's just so much I could talk about here. So many things that we could discuss, but I want to emphasize just a few. This false prophet, his whole purpose, his whole mission is to do what? To promote the Antichrist. 
so much so to promote that he will draw all men to the Antichrist, make an attempt to draw all men, to draw everyone to the Antichrist. He comes as a lamb, but yet he comes with power and authority of the Antichrist. It says he has the purpose and the power to do wonders. Now here's something I want you to understand, and I don't want you to ever forget this. In fact, if you want to write it in your margin, Satan has power, and he can give his power to demons. Are you with me, church? I mean, if you've ever heard of demon-possessed, right? Now let me just, I don't want to go into a lot of detail on that, but let me just say this. I want to prove to you with one statement why Satan could never be God. Are you ready for this? Satan has no power to create something from nothing. Write that down. Satan has no power to create something from nothing. Isn't that amazing? But what Satan can do is manipulate are you with me? And that's what he's doing. He is manipulating. He is deceiving. He has not the power of God. Therefore, listen, if he cannot... <laughs> Who created Lucifer? And God gave and allowed a free will. Did he not? And Satan said, hey, listen, way back in the Old Testament, he says, I want to be like God. God said, no, you can't be like me. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> right? And he, gave, he took, a, what, a third, remember that? A third of the angels with him, or the demons with him. So he will have the power to do things, and he will be in amazement. People will be amazed at the power he has, because he wants to look like who, church? He wants to look like God. But he does not have the power of God. His power is restricted. God only allows it to happen. Well, let's read on. Verse number 15. And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast would even speak and cause as many as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Now, I want to just pause here just for a moment. Who has Revelation chapter 20, verse 4? Now, we haven't gotten there yet. We're going to get into that latter part of this book in just a moment. But I want to just give you a foretaste of what's being spoke of here. Who has that one? Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Now, listen to this. Then I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was given to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God, and those who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received the mark on their forehead and on their hand, and they came to life, and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Okay. This verse has, uh, it tells us two things. Number one, it tells us that those that refused to take the mark were what, church? What happened to them? They were beheaded. They were killed. It also tells us because they refused to take the mark that they were what? Followers of Jesus Christ, and he will raise them. Amen, church? So now let, let's go back to this verse again. Notice with me here because it was important that I take you to Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, because look at this verse. Verse number, six, uh, verse number 15 and 16, it says, And it was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast, so that the image of the beast would even speak and cause many to what? That do not worship the image to be what, church? killed. Again, go to Revelation chapter 20. Those that refuse to take the mark, those that refuse to worship the beast will be what? Will be killed. Okay. Now, verse number 16. And he causes all, the small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free men and the slaves, to be given a mark on their right hand and on their forehead. And he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell, except the one who has the what, church? Either the name of the beast or the number of his name, which is 666. Here is wisdom. Let him who, under, who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for the number is that of man, and his number is 666. All right. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 10. Who has that one? 
Then another angel, a third one, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and his image and receives a mark on his forehead or on his head, hand, he will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is mixed in full strength in the cup of his anger. And he will be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. All right. Now, I want you in your margin... If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. This is very important for you to hear this. Verse number 16 says this, And he causes all, the great and the small, the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves, to, to what? To be given a mark on their right hand or their forehead. Verse 17 says, And he provides that no one will be able to buy or to sell or to accept the one who has the mark, except for the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or his name. Now listen. In order for you to accept the mark, now listen to me. In order for you to accept the mark, you have to do what, church? Let me hear it again. Those that accept the mark have denied Christ. Now what did Jim just read? Those that have accepted the mark have denied Christ and they will face what? The same judgment and wrath of God that who's going to face, church? Satan will face. Where you sit right now, you see, you don't... Let me word this in a different way. Where you sit right now, you've accepted one of two marks. Are you with me, church? Where you're sitting right now, you've accepted one or two marks. Either you have been sealed through the blood of Jesus Christ, or you have not. If you have not been sealed with the blood of Jesus Christ, at this very moment, what mark are you holding? The mark of who? The mark of Satan, because you have not received Jesus Christ. Do you kind of understand where I'm going with this? You see, you have a choice today. During that tribulation, the, cho the choice will be such, such a choice that it will be what? manifested by a what? By an official mark. Now, again, I just, because my mind is, it's, it's not like that of a prosecutor. I mean, my goodness, this guy is so intelligent. Law degree. I love him to death. But I got this little mind, so I, I just try to figure things out really small for me. Okay? It helps me out. Wow. Wow. I have the opportunity right now in the freedom of this country to choose to serve Christ. If it was during the tribulation and you knew death was imminent, if you were across the pond and you knew death was imminent, how many of you would choose to serve Christ? I want you to ask yourself that. Can you imagine those saints of God during that time of tribulation as they're marched one by one? If you want to live, if you want to buy, you take the mark. For you to take the mark, you denounce this God. Are you with me, church? You see, for me as a pastor, as a follower of Jesus Christ, my heart's desire is to be doing what God asked me to do. To go out and to share the light. To share the salvation that you can have in Jesus Christ so you don't have to face that. As a follower of Jesus Christ, those in this room, that should be your heart's desire. There are some of you in this room this morning who have a family member that doesn't know Jesus. Have you taken the time to share Jesus with them? Marty, they know exactly what I once was. Even better, they can see what Jesus has done in your life. Maybe you've got a coworker. Marty, I'm just too embarrassed to share Jesus with them. Really? Aren't you thankful that person wasn't too embarrassed to share Jesus with you? You see, it may cost you something. It may cost you to step out of your comfort zone during that time of tribulation. Those that proclaim Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior will lose their life.
but they will lose their life only to what church? To gain their life. Amen? Well, let's go on and let's finish this chapter up. Here is the wisdom. Let him who understands calculate the number of the beast. For the number of the beast is the number of man, 666. My prayer this morning is that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. As we sang that song this morning, that you have been sealed by the Lamb. 